So after HTML 4.01, the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, started working on XHTML. And XHTML stands for Extensible HTML, Extensible Hypertext, Markstup, hypertext Markup. <laughs> and uh, it's actually just the same as HTML 4.01, uh, XHTML 1.0 was. Um, but they, they implemented uh, XML syntax. So XML syntax, XML is a language that's very common uh, in computers, um, and it, it's very old as well. And uh, it, it, by, by using this syntax, it made, uh, made the internet more compatible with uh, a lot of different programs. So um, the major advantage was that if you had XML formatted documents that you wanted to include in your website, you could put them directly in, and because it was XML, valid XML, then it would uh, it would parse right through it, and it would include it as part of the document. So uh, SVG images and MathML are probably the most uh, common examples of that. Although um, actually they're they're used fairly infrequently, and that that's probably due in, at least in part to some problems with XHTML that I'll talk about in a bit. Um, so the other things with XHTML are that. Uh, XHTML needs to be sent with its own MIME type, a special XHTML MIME type, and it enforces stricter syntax. So a lot of people really liked that XHTML would uh, throw an error directly onto the page if you have, uh, if you, for example, forgot to put uh, a closing tag on an element, or if there was some other minor problem. There's an Indian, there's there's a, a nesting problem, for example. Um, anything like that could throw an error, and uh, it would show up right away, and you'd have to fix it. So it was it was very unforgiving. Um, you couldn't get tag soup with XHTML. If you if you wrote tag soup in XHTML, it would just break. <laughs> um, so let's look real quick at an example of some XHTML. Um, this is XHTML. That's uh, it's actually 1.1, which was a uh, a little bit more uh, getting into the uh, XML style of of syntax than just 1.0. And it, it, this doc type also specifies that it's using MathML and SVG. Um, and then you'll, you'll notice a lot of XM, XHTML websites have this in the top. So you'll just have to copy and paste that to make sure you uh, tell the, any XML uh, reader that, that might be reading through your code other than a browser you know, wh what exactly this is and how to render it. So you'll see it looks pretty much the same as normal HTML. Um, this is kind of a rare example in that I'm using MathML and uh, SVG, which, which most XHTML websites that you see will not use these, actually. Um, but it's, it's all the same sort of HTML tags you're used to. Um, and then right here, we've got this MathML thrown in. And this is its own sort of, uh, MathML is its own thing. So this is following its own rules. And it renders it in a way that the browser can see that it's, uh, that it's math. You've got this uh, equation set up here. And this, this browser isn't uh, putting the lines or anything, but it, it actually, you can get very complicated math symbols uh, using MathML. Um, and then down here, you already saw the image. This is an SVG image, this section right here. And it's in XML. And it specifies these three circles, and the colors are overlapping, and you can see how the colors interact with each other. Um, this is not an image that I've included. I can't right-click on this and save the image. It's, S it's an SVG image. Um, so you see it's defining these three circles. Here's the first circle. It's red. Second circle right here is blue. And then it, it specifies the size and, and all these other things. And you can get very complicated with this as well. Um, this is something you can't do in HTML. Uh, because uh, this is uh, this is XML format, so that's an advantage of XML. If you if you need to be using MathML, you you'll probably want to use XML, X, X HTML. Um, 